Tennessee Tech graduate student Samantha Wyatt and friends Don't fall in over here. are tromping the woods of Catoosa Wildlife Management Area in search of one of its smallest residents. I love amphibians and the green salamander is one of my favorites. Looking for one of these tiny creatures is a challenge. The green salamander is an animal that is highly specialized in, in the habitat that it uses. Where is he, Mark? He's right here. Well, you hold your it takes patient probing of the crevices and rock outcrops. The TWRA's Kirk Miles and Mark Thurman join Tennessee Tech biology professor Dan Combs to help Samantha with her research project. They are completely terrestrial. They even lay their eggs inside the rock crevices, so they don't even have to have water for their eggs. Yeah, it's, it's almost like using it prehensile-like in a way. Look at yay duck. Part of the fun of searching for green salamanders is their elusiveness. All right, I'm ready. You got it? Go ahead and probe on its head. Here he comes. All right, oh, that's good. Just keep it going. Come on. There we oh, go. Nice. Goddamn! With its flat head and slender body, the green salamander is well adapted to its rugged home. I think that's one of the most fascinating things about it is the fact that it is a very unique species, has adapted to a really unusual environment for a salamander. And to me, that's probably the most valuable thing about it. This old growth forest is a perfect habitat for the green salamander, but the fate of the forest itself is tied directly to the fate of the animal. That's because the tree canopy provides cover and moist areas for the salamander. If anything happened to that tree canopy, all this area would dry up. Chances are the salamander wouldn't have much longer to live. Habitat that is directly around these outcrops keep the outcrops shaded and moist, so it keeps the outcrops from drying out or from overheating, so it, it keeps the habitat nice for the salamanders. Samantha is studying not only the animal's travel patterns, but also how different aspects of the green salamander's home, the rock outcrops, the crevices, the woods around them, affect its uncertain future. It's an important effort for the TWRA. We'll be inventorying those populations, keeping up with them, making sure that, that they're doing all right, not only on our management areas, but outside of our management areas. So far, the findings are encouraging. When we first started looking for them, we anticipated it'd be mostly the larger rock faces, but we've actually found them in some small ones as well, which indicates they're probably moving between the rock faces more than we anticipated originally. But keeping the green salamander off the endangered list might prove just as difficult as finding them in the tiny rock crevices. That's an important reason to study them now. We want to take a proactive approach and try to keep them from reaching the point where they would actually be threatened or endangered. Oh, he just went straight back in there, didn't he? That one had no intention of coming out. Yeah. It might be hard for most people to understand how these small animals impact the environment. But Samantha's work is expected to reconfirm the green salamander's important niche in this world. It's one of the small things that people don't think about every day, but it's something that's very important to the whole ecosystem. It's that one part in the food chain, you know, that one part of the ecosystem that shouldn't be overlooked just because it seems small and, and important. I'm Alan Griggs on Tennessee's Wild Side.